Hello, it's Matt from JADO channel. Welcome to another video in which we will cover features of directory services in JNDI. After presenting LDAP and discussing topics regarding attributes, we move on to the last important functionality that is supported by directory services, and it is searching. This is the plan for this episode. We start with introducing and explaining search results class that is the result of all searches no matter of version of search method. Then we will discuss search based on simple attributes matching. As a next step we develop idea of attributes matching, but we use search filters instead that allow you to use more sophisticated matches. Finally, we'll use search controls. With them you can control the result of the search operation and for example define limit on how many objects will be returned. Before continuing, please download search LDIF file for new LDAP partition containing exported data prepared for searching purposes. Create new partition called JEDU search, no spaces, at the same level as JEDU partition and import LDIF file from URL in the description. Remember to provide this JEDU search partition in your environment properties in provider URL property. Let's go now to the first point of our plan. Regardless of which search method you invoke, this method always returns enumeration of search result objects. Every search result represents one directory object that matches search criteria. Search result class is derived from binding class, so even such search result you might access actual object, its name or its class name. One thing that is added by search results class is that you can also access attributes of such object. It is perfectly reasonable since all search criteria concern attributes of a directory object. Let's start with the simplest possible example and list all people entries which have object class attribute equal to inet org person. In this version of search, all criteria describing a search will be provided in form of attributes object. We create basic attributes object with initial attribute object class and its value equal to inetwork person. Now we invoke search method on root context of a directory. Since we want to perform our search inside people organizational unit, we pass a name bound to people's LDAP context that is relative to this root initial context. As a second parameter we pass attributes object that contains our criteria that our object class attribute must have value inet org person. A search method, no matter in which version, returns enumeration of search result objects. If you want to go through all entries that match your searching criteria, you need to iterate through such enumeration. In our case, for each object we'll print its full name in namespace and also its attributes. Run the example and look at the output. All objects from people context have been returned by a search. Let us now add another criteria for our search. Besides requirement about object class, We'll only want to get people with specific surname. What we need is only one change. To our attributes container, we add another attribute with key sn, or surname, and value dubin. Now searching will return all entries that are located within people context, have inet org person value in object class attribute, and have dubin as a value of surname attribute. There are three such entries and you can check it in Apache Directory Studio. Running the example also confirms it. Besides finding entries with specific attribute values, you may also demand that an entry simply must have some attribute. Its value is not relevant. In our example, we'll add one more criteria. A result entry must have attribute with id equal to initials. So we add an attribute object with id initials and null value. 
During search operation, this attribute will be interpreted as required, but its value won't be checked. If you look in LDAP content in Apache Directory Studio or analyze previous output, you will notice that within those three returned entries, only one entry, Elizabeth Davin, has initials attribute. Let's run this example. As you see, the only directory object in people context that matches our criteria is Elizabeth Dubbin. If you look at attributes that are printed, you can notice that there are all associated ones with given object. If you are only interested in few of them, you can specify them in a string array passed as a third parameter of search method. For example, if you only want to use common name, surname and telephone number, you pass such array. After running the example, you see expected results. There are two things worth to mention about that last argument concerning narrowing returned attributes. If you pass null, you say that you want all attributes, just as in case where you do not use third parameter. But if you pass an empty array, it means that no attributes will be returned for each search result. That's all about directory searching by passing all criteria in attributes object. This way of passing searching criteria limits you to simple equal comparisons of attributes values and combining all conditions with logical end operator. The second way of specifying criteria is much more flexible and at the same time is way more concise. You express every detail of search through a special query written as a string with predefined syntax. Usually, we call it a filter expression. Before continuing, we'll just move fragment of code responsible for iterating through enumeration of search results and displaying it to a separate method. And the old search code will comment out. Let's now approach the same problems we have worked with during this video, but with use of filter expressions. First, we'll search all entries with object class equal to inet or person. Search filter that represents this criteria is following string. Object class equal sign inet or person. In general, structure of the most basic element in search filter is like this. Attribute key, then operator, that in this case is equal, followed by attributes value. When you pass search criteria as a string filter expression, you need also provide search controls object. This object contains few properties that control search result. We'll get back to it at the end of this video. For now, we'll use default controls and pass null. Now we can pass our search result to method displaying it. Run it and see that produced output is the same as when we used attributes object. Let's now narrow the results and add to our search criteria surname filter. We'll apply logical end operation. Its syntax is as follows. Ampersand, followed by any number of filter expressions that must be true while searching. Every filter expression is wrapped with brackets and so is whole end expression. Run the example and verify the output. The next thing we add is obligatory initials attribute. If you want to add filter expression representing just existence of attribute, use equal sign operator. You may also understand it as an attribute equal to any value. And this any value is here represented as star character. Running this example produces output with single search result item representing Elizabeth Dub in person. Notice that no matter how complex and complicated your searching filter expression is, the way you join it with their context API is the same. Therefore, we'll go to the next point of the video. If you are interested in more knowledge about filter expression syntax in JNDI, you can stay with JEDU and watch the next video. I will go through the most important features of filter expressions in it. You can also look into the RFC document linked in the description. It's now time to reveal a little secret that was search controls object. As I said, it allows you to slightly control behavior of search 
and its final result. Here's what you can do with search controls. You can define search scope, whether you want to search one level, whole subtree, or maybe check if single target object matches your criteria. You can also define maximum number of objects returned from a search. If your directory is huge and you don't want to wait too long for search results, you can define maximum time you will wait for them. You can define which attribute should be returned in search result. This is in fact the same feature as third parameter in first version of search method we have discussed. You can also control whether each search result will contain actual object that matches your criteria. This on the other hand is similar to difference between list and list bindings method in context interface. And last thing, references to the link. Or to be more specific, if possible link found in search as an object should be the reference. We'll ignore this setting so far since we haven't discussed links in JND yet. Let's see how search controls work with the example. For this purpose, we'll do a very simple search that only checks if an object has object class attribute. So basically every directory object within search scope will match our query. We'll perform a search from the initial context. Let's run our search with default search controls. You see that only two objects were matched. This is because the default scope of a search is one level. There are basically three possible scopes of a search in JNDI. This picture presents which objects will be served depending on scope flag. It assumes that the target context on which search is started is the blue one. Object scope means that only target dir context will be used. So results of such search may contain zero or one object depending on whether this object satisfies search filter. One level scope, that is default, applies a search to all child context in a target context. Subtree scope flag means that entire subtree will be searched starting from a root that is a target context and going through all intermediate dir contexts. In our example, we will use subtree scope. Run the example and notice that now there are plenty of results. Assume that you are only interested in first few of them, let's say 5. What you will need is count limit property set to 5. After modifying count limit and running the example, we will notice that only 5 results are listed. However, during invoking has more method to check whether there is 6 element, we receive size limit exceeded exception. This is an information that there are more elements matching our search query, but you won't access them due to count limit setting for this search. Please take a look at our method that lists a naming enumeration. Let's change has more method to has more elements method that is part of standard Java enumeration interface and it does not expose any exceptions. Now, if you run this example, you will also get 5 results, but during checking if there is 6 element, you will simply get an information that there is no 6 element. And no exception will be thrown. It's up to you whether you want to be notified about such situation by an exception. If all you need is false value, returned from has more elements method, do not hesitate to use it. In my opinion the most relevant information that is carried by size limit exceeded exception is that except for results in naming enumeration, there are other objects matching your query in given scope. In case of has more elements method you simply get false value and you don't know that if you increase the search limit, you would have got more results. In this example, we'll leave has more elements method that does not throw any exceptions. Let us now add to our printing method a single message with actual object matching a search. We'll use its basic string representation return from to string method. Run example and notice that this object is always null. The reason of such behavior is that it's simply default setting in search controls. If you want to have access to actual directory object, you need to set returning object flag in search controls to true. After this change, object will be contained in search results. Produced output confirms this fact. 
There is also a setting that allows you to define which attributes should be returned inside search result object for each directory object. It is passed through string array to set returning attributes method and works exactly as you could expect. In fact, we have already discussed it, so we won't focus on it again. To show you how it works, I will simply set it to single element array with object class value. Now after running the example, there is only one attribute for each search result object. As I said in the beginning of section about search controls, you can also define maximum time you want to wait for search results. At least in theory, because in practice it does not work. I have made a little research through the internet and found few other people that complain about that feature. Based on the documentation, all you need to do is set time limit property to number of milliseconds you want to wait. Default value is zero and means that there is no upper bound for how long it may take. Let's say we want to wait no longer than half a second, so we specify 500 of milliseconds. The fact that time was exceeded will be carried by time limit exceeded exception thrown by search method. So if you want to specify time limit, you must be prepared for handling such exception. Unfortunately, I will not present it to you since this feature is broken. The last setting for dereferencing links will be omitted since so far we haven't talked about links in JNDI. We are moving to the end of this video. Putting this all together, you now know two ways of performing a search in JNDI. First, allows you to pass your criteria through attributes object and assumes that all you need is simple equal matching. The second way uses filter expressions and in this video we have presented simple queries and way you can pass them to search method. In the next video we will focus only on filter expression and discuss its syntax in more details. We will also discuss how we can use variables in such filter to make it even more flexible. Finally, the last thing you have seen was using search controls class. I hope you enjoyed video and can't wait for the next episode of JEDO. If so, you can vote up the video and subscribe to JEDO. Stay tuned and see ya!